my brother Aleke, uh, you would be the one to attest to it that I love you from the bottom of my heart and I have tremendous respect for you. And even for the person that you are, ever ready to help, and I can publicly even uh, attest to that. You've been kind to me and all that. But let me tell you something. Whatever we are doing, even at this time, it's about what uh, this brilliant uh, footballer um, had explained away why he will laugh out even when he misses an obvious chance. And that is JJ Okocha. People thought he was laughing just for the fun of it. No, it was out of extreme and deep hot. Whatever we are doing tonight will never affect the outcome of the primaries. It will never change uh, Buhari's mind. So it is not about you trying to um, emotionally blackmail us or to be uh, perhaps trying to do some emotional marketing. It, it has nothing to do with what we are doing. If you really want to understand what is going on, I will try and explain. Tinubu is the very architect of what is happening to him. The very, very architect of what is happening to him. If Tinubu had played the Omoluwa B kind of politics, this is a man that was a nobody, a practical nobody that Afeni Ferry threw up as a governorship candidate. Even when it was controversial, they jettisoned one of their own, Funshaw Williams, to accommodate him, who was never a member of Afeni Ferry. And what then happened? See the way he treated the elders, the leaders of Afeni Ferry, who made him to become a governor. And if he had not become a governor, then what would have been his trajectory in life? As if that is not enough. See the way he decided to play the ultimate betrayer of his own people by supporting Tambua against the person that the PDB had chosen to be the number one citizen of this country, a Yoruba Mulika Takonde. But there's always something called karma. I didn't have anything to do with that. Not none of us here who are seemingly making jest of it. But we are hurting. It's just that this man threw away everything about the Yoruba heritage just to pander to this same Fulani that you said, hey, wait until the Fulani take over. Are we getting real here? He's the architect of all that has happened. For how many years? The man even refused to study history. Afonja did it. Alimi. That he recruited. What did Alimi do to Afonja at the end of the day? He killed him. Now what did Alimi do? He sold his bathra. He sold his people. Caused the fall of the Oyo Empire. And then what happened to Akintola? In wooing and hobnobbing with the north. The Fulani. Look out. Look at how it turned out to be. For him. Look at Abiola. He won free and fair. Is, is Tunubu ever going to tell me that he has done more for the North, for the core North, for the Fulani, for the Hausa, more than what uh, 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 Abiola did for them? Maybe you should listen to the interview that Edmond Obilo conducted. Uh, the one he, he sought for the opinion of, of Dr. Victor Omolulu Shubawale Ululoyo. Now, the point I'm making is very simple. It shouldn't, like in the interview that I did with the same Edmond Obilo, it shouldn't have ventured out of this very safe place. He should have walked towards building the Yoruba nation. He should have walked towards building everything. Like Papa Wolowa did. He should have made sure that we had a place that is second to none. When I was consulting actively for the World Bank, now there, there is a document that I came across and I started to shed tears immediately. That in the whole of the world, 
1962, no other region, no other part of the world had the kind of growth that the western region of Nigeria had. So what stopped Tinubu from doing that? Rather than that, selfishly he ventured into the Sahel to go and meet these same people that have shown us that they don't like us, that they don't play with power. And look at what has happened. They will kill our people, they will not talk. The daughter of the leader of the Yoruba was killed by these same people. He went to Akure and denied and said it was not the Fulani. And he said, we are the cows. And what do you want me to do? To support such a human being? To support such a vile person who sold us to the Fulani in 2015 and continue to sell us until today. That suddenly now the dawn of awakening has come. Am I a fool? This man is treacherous. The Fulani killed people at Okiogun. Killed people at Ibarakwa. Killed people at Yewa. He didn't say one, one thing. Not one sentence came from him. Neither did he even try to alleviate the sufferings of these people by either visiting them or even sending them money or something. But let something happen. A small market bonds in Kano. He goes there to donate 50 million. But then how many markets have, have gotten bonds in, in, in Ibadan? In Lagos here even. So why would you come here and try to gaslight us? Why? My good friend and brother. Why? On who? And people will say, oh, Tabaja be Kakuko. That that is a shipa away. If we go to the war front and it's a real war, Ogun law, why did Tabaja be Kakuko? If I say that to an enemy, I'm dead already. Any yara logun be lor ogun. Tabaja be ti kakuko be tibao. This man didn't know that we exist before he started all his rigmarole with the Fulani and decided to jettison us. Now he's telling us, I must sing one from so 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 years. Who asked you? To go and become a slave to them, thinking that they will give you power. Is that the way it works with the Fulani? They said, conscience is an open wound. Only the truth can heal it. Who said it? Udman Dampodio. Does Tunimbu have conscience? If he had conscience, will he be doing all that he has done to the Yoruba? Ordinary at Motekun, some of us labored. I was part of those who drew the bill. I went to radio and television to promote Motekun. I went to defend the bill on the floor of the House of Chiefs in Ibadan. And then, as this even considered setting up a Matekun in Lagos, uh, that is the kind of person you want me to have some, some sympathy with, empathy with. As if that is not enough. This is the man that has disrespected my own leaders, my selfless leaders. Papa De Banjo, has he ever held a position? Three times he was asked to be a House of Reps. Two times he was asked to be a Senator. Two times he was asked to be a Governor. The man refused. All he has is just his love for the Yoruba. But then he would disrespect them. So, he wouldn't tell lies against them. And then, you are trying to appeal to what exactly? All the bridges that he has burnt? Does anybody actually think of tomorrow in such a way that Tinubu has discarded about tomorrow? So it should be very clear to you. None of us here will be able to affect, change anything that is going to happen in, in, in Abuja. So don't come and tell us hey, when. So if I, if I even say, oh, okay, I support Buhari, does that, I support Tinubu, does that make him Buhari's choice? Does that make him the president of Nigeria? So why don't we tell ourselves the truth and say to everyone that even if the Fulani are going to emerge and rule for another eight years, it is Tinubu's fault, not my fault, not the fault of anyone you are trying to, 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 to gaslight here, not the fault of anyone you are trying to emotionally stigmatize here. It doesn't work out that way, my brother. Tinubu is the architect of his own misfortune. End of story. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media. Download the BG Media app today or visit barglobal.net for more podcasts.